Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepakshi Khurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Tuesday, the 3rd of May. Indian Prime Minister Modi holds talks with Danish counterpart in Copenhagen, calls for ceasefire in Ukraine. Ousted Pakistani Prime Minister Imran Khan blames US President Biden for toppling his government. And Muslims across South Asia celebrate Eid al-Fitr with mass prayers. And now for all the details. On the second day of his three-nation, three-day Europe tour, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Tuesday held talks with his Danish counterpart, Mette Fredriksen, in Copenhagen. Both the leaders reviewed progress in the Green Strategic Partnership, bilateral cooperation and Russia-Ukraine conflict, among other issues of mutual interest. PM Modi called for a ceasefire in Ukraine and peace talks between Kyiv and Moscow. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Tuesday arrived in Denmark's capital, Copenhagen, on the second leg of his Europe tour after concluding his visit to Germany. He was received by his Danish counterpart Mette Frederiksen at the airport as a special gesture. The Danish PM later gave a tour of her official residence to PM Modi before the two leaders held delegation-level talks, in which both sides reviewed progress in the India-Denmark Green Strategic Partnership and other areas of bilateral cooperation. Their discussions also included the Russia-Ukraine war, among other issues of mutual interest. Later, both the leaders witnessed exchange of letters of intent on migration and mobility partnership, cooperation in animal husbandry, and agreements including on cooperation in the field of skill development, education, and entrepreneurship. During a joint statement, PM Modi called for a ceasefire in Ukraine and peace talks between Kyiv and Moscow. We Ukraine और समस्या के समाधान के लिए बातचीत और कुटनीति का रास्ता अपनाने की अपील की। The Indian Prime Minister will be attending the second India Nordic Summit on Wednesday in Denmark, which will focus on economic engagement, green partnership, and mobility and cooperation in the Arctic region before he heads to France. And Pakistan's ousted Prime Minister Imran Khan has once again directly blamed the U.S. President Joe Biden's administration for conspiring and toppling his government through a parliamentary vote of confidence. Khan, who led the nuclear-armed South Asian country of 220 million people for three and a half years, was unceremoniously removed from office last month, becoming the first premier in Pakistan's history to be ousted through a no-trust motion. Ousted Pakistani Prime Minister Imran Khan on Monday openly called out U.S. President Joe Biden's administration for its involvement in a regime change conspiracy in Pakistan. 69-year-old Khan has repeatedly accused the United States for backing the no-confidence motion that led to his ouster last month. He had said that he visited Moscow against U.S. advice. Washington denied any role in the process. In a tweet, Khan asked the Biden administration whether its involvement in the regime change conspiracy had lessened or increased the anti-American sentiment in Pakistan. His fresh claim came as he took to Twitter in response to U.S. defense analyst Dr. Rebecca Grant's remarks about Pakistan in a Fox News show. Khan has aired his conspiracy allegations in three huge public rallies he has held since he was ousted. He has demanded fresh elections amid political turmoil after a new government took over and warned it faces an enormous challenge to revive a battered economy. Shahbaz Sharif was sworn in as the 23rd Prime Minister on April 11. More than two weeks later, Sharif appointed a multi-party coalition cabinet made up of former political rivals in opposition who united to oust Khan. The next parliamentary election is due in 2023. Although Khan, a cricket star-turned-politician, has claimed that United States was behind his downfall, 
he had lately fallen out with the country's powerful military over differences for the appointment of country's top intelligence chief. And moving on, political activists have demanded self-determination and abolishment of the 1949 Karachi Agreement that they blame curtails the fundamental rights of the people in Pakistan-administered Kashmir. Locals accuse they have suffered decades of discrimination and persecution owing to skewed policies and agreements framed by the Pakistani establishment. Political activists have demanded self-determination, autonomy and immediate abolishment of the 1949 Karachi Agreement, which they blame curtails fundamental rights of the people in the illegally occupied region. Raja Amin, a leader of National Awami Party, said that the Karachi Agreement, which was formulated on 28 April 1949 by Pakistan, deprives the people of Pakistan-administered Kashmir of significant powers, undermining their political rights. It was introduced by Islamabad to ratify its administrative control without consulting any shareholder in the region. The people in the region are fed up of Pakistani occupation, he said. A majority of the people of the country are free and free, which is why all of them are free and all of them are free. Locals blame they have suffered decades of discrimination and persecution for even raising their rightful demands owing to skewed policies and agreements framed by Islamabad. There is a Prime Minister and President in Pakistan administered Kashmir, but they are merely stooges who ignore their plight and are only there to help Islamabad fill its treasuries. And U.S. Special Envoy Reena Amiri has called upon Muslim-majority nations to champion the rights of Afghan girls, expressing deep concern over the Taliban's decision to indefinitely extend the ban on allowing girls in seventh grade and above to attend school. She said there is a need to unite to push the Taliban to reverse these restrictions. U.S. Special Envoy for Afghan Women, Girls and Human Rights Reena Amiri has said that leaders of Muslim-majority nations must champion the rights of Afghan women and girls as Taliban policies denying girls and women education and jobs aren't seen in any other Islamic country. Taking to Twitter, Amiri said ambassadors from several Muslim-majority countries agreed on this during an iftar dinner hosted by top US officials on Monday. She said unity is important in pushing the Taliban to reopen schools and demanding protection of all Afghans, particularly ethnic and religious minorities. Girls' schools were scheduled to reopen across Afghanistan in late March after months of closure, but the Taliban indefinitely extended the ban on female students attending schools from 7th grade and above. The move has drawn widespread criticism since then. The international community has made the education of girls a key demand for any future recognition of the Taliban administration, which took over the country last August as foreign forces withdrew. The Taliban regime has reportedly also imposed restrictions on women, largely excluding them from the workforce amid an economic crisis. And Sri Lanka's Finance Minister Ali Sabri has informed the Cabinet that all public expenditure other than essential services will have to be tightly controlled to cope with the challenging environment in the country. Hit hard by the pandemic and short of revenue after President Gotabaya Rajpaksa's government imposed steep tax cuts, the island nation is facing the worst economic crisis in its history. As Sri Lanka faces its worst economic crisis in its history, Finance Minister Ali Sabri informed the Cabinet on Tuesday that all public expenditure other than essential services will have to be tightly controlled to cope with the challenging environment in the country. Government institutions in Sri Lanka are already instructed to strictly follow the restrictions already introduced by several circulars. They include controlling the payment of fuel and communication allowances, restrictions of water and electricity expenditure, suspending the construction and hiring buildings, among others. The island nation's economy was hit hard by the pandemic and tax cuts by President Gotabaya Rajpaksa's government. Rampant inflation and shortages of imported food, fuel and medicines has led to weeks of sporadically violent protest. Rajpaksa was hit by mass resignations from his cabinet last month and now faces the possibility of a no-confidence vote in his reformed government later in the week. 
The main opposition Samagi Jana Balavigya led by Sajid Premadasa is preparing to table a no confidence motion and an impeachment motion against the current government. Meanwhile Sri Lanka has extended a credit line with India by 200 million US dollars in order to procure emergency fuel stocks the country's power and energy minister Kanchana Vijayasekara said on Monday as China said it supported efforts for the island nation to restructure its debt the island nation has also approached the international monetary fund IMF for an emergency bailout Moving on, Muslims across South Asian countries, including India, Pakistan and Nepal, celebrated Eid al-Fitr with mass prayers on Tuesday, while most COVID-19 restrictions have been eased amid a decline in cases. Muslims across India on Tuesday observed Eid al-Fitr, marking the end of Islam's holiest month of Ramadan that honors the revelation of the Holy Quran to Prophet Muhammad. Hundreds of devotees turned up for mass prayers at the iconic Mughal era Jama Masjid in Indian capital New Delhi and other mosques in parts of the country after nearly 2 years as COVID-19 restrictions have been eased. Eid al-Fitr is celebrated on the first day of Shawwal, the 10th month of the Islamic lunar calendar. The celebration depends on the sighting of the moon and varies in different countries. The day begins with early morning prayers. and then family visits and feasts eid ka matlab ye happiness and 2 saal ke baad jab jama masjid jab open hui hai to it gave us a play, I mean, lots of pleasure jiska main aapko bayan hi nahi kar sakta isliye sari family hamari aayi hai sare cousins hain uncles hain hum khud aaye hain just to celebrate or to offer our namaz here only similar scenes were witnessed in pakistan where worshipers gathered at local mosques and prayer grounds to offer prayers with no covid-19 restrictions for the first time in 2 years people however complained the festival is a time for feasting and buying new outfits but most items have become expensive amid soaring inflation petrol aur gosht ye teenon cheezein dono cheezein bahut mehangi hai gosht khas hai wo murghi ka ho ya jana gaye ko ka ho dono mehangi hai theek hai about mangi Meanwhile Muslims in Nepal also gathered in large numbers for prayers at the Nepali Kashmir Jama Mosque in capital Kathmandu which had remained closed for public gatherings on Eid for the past 2 years Eid celebrations mark the purification achieved by a month of special prayers and dawn to dusk fasting one of the five pillars of Islam it is also a time to engage in various acts of charity And Hindu devotees thronged the banks of River Ganga in India's northern Varanasi town on Tuesday for a holy dip to mark the occasion of Akshay Tritya, an event considered auspicious by many Hindus. Meanwhile, gold lovers flocked to jewelry stores as it is also considered the most auspicious time to buy the yellow metal. On the auspicious occasion of Akshay Tritya, Hindu devotees in India's northern Varanasi town thronged the banks of River Ganges and took holy dip in the sacred river. This day is considered one of the foremost sacred days of the year. Devotees were seen performing rituals and prepared akshaya dish to offer it to Hindu Lord Vishnu, who is known as the preserver and protector of the universe. On this day people worship Lord Vishnu and pay obeisance to Goddess Lakshmi and other deities after taking a holy dip. सबसे पवित्र दिवस है आज का दिन। आप किसी चीज का क्षय नहीं होता है। अगर आप मंत्र का जाप करते हैं तो आपके हजारों गुना पुण्य मिलते हैं। गंगा में स्नान करते हैं उसके हजारों गुना पुण्य मिलते हैं। आज आप जितना आप पुण्य करेंगे आपको उसका फल हजारों गुना प्राप्त होता है। In India's southern Chennai city, people throng jewelry showrooms to buy gold, silver, and other ornaments on the occasion. It is traditionally believed that any venture initiated on this day is bound to bring success, joy, and luck. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com/sasianewsline and follow us on Twitter at sasianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.
Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.